What's up guys and welcome to another Zygreen uh, car review. Today we've got a familiar face, some of you guys might remember Brian from uh, last time, a few months ago I reviewed his Ford Focus ST and now we're in, you guessed it, a Ford Focus RS 2016 model. Almost brand new, only about 1600 miles on the odometer. Um, so tell me about your car. Um, it's nitrous blue, as you can probably yes, tell from Yes, it's very now. nitrous blue. I got it because I wanted to upgrade from the ST. But when I was looking at these cars, I considered the STI because it is significantly better priced. The, the new STI, right? Yeah. yeah. Actually, that's a good point. So this car is around 40k MSRP, right? Uh, it was 42.20 MSRP. 4220. And the STI is not too far from that, but I guess the big difference is that this has a ton of markup, right? Yeah. I paid a 5k markup on it. Okay. So the car came out to 45 220. It's a different engine, the ST, correct? Yeah, this one has the same motor that was in the EcoBoost Mustang. In the EcoBoost Mustang, so 2.3 liter yeah. um, turbocharged inline four, but it pumps out a ridiculous 350 horsepower yeah. and 350 foot pounds of torque, correct? Yes, it does. And it's got the, the suspension settings that goes from stiff to having something rammed in your rectum. So. <laughs> So we're just in the normal, what is it called? Is it called comfort it's, mode or just, it's just normal? It's just normal. Okay. So it's already a pretty stiff car. It, I can feel everything, not through the steering wheel, but through just, you know, the seat, the chassis. It just transmits a lot of bumps from the road. Definitely. Especially coming from the ST. It was, it was a little stiff, but it wasn't, it wasn't like this. Oh boy. Yeah. Is this the stiff mode? Yep. Right, let's see what we're working with here. Oh my god. <laughs> How did they approve this, like, to leave the factory with a mode that does this? I do not know. This feels honestly worse than my old S2000, which was pretty much slammed on coilovers. You're not hearing a whole lot of squeaks and rattles, because the car is modern and new, but just... That's I bad. feel bad for your viewers, you're gonna see my man boobs jiggling <laughs> around this whole fucking time now. <laughs> oh my god, that's too stiff. <laughs> don't like it. Can we put it back in normal yeah. mode, please? Uh, on the blinker, uh -huh. there's a, that push that button. Push it? Yeah. And now it's off. Oh, okay. So are we in just normal sport mode, or is this... No, this is still... Mode? It's still in the track setting, but it's... Oh, it turned the dampers. Yeah, you turn... you. Oh, okay. So you, you can... make them softer. You can yeah. do that. Okay, that's good. fast 350 horsepower doesn't sound like an incredible amount of power but I think what gives this car that kind of speed just exiting the corners obviously the all-wheel drive it's not the kind of all-wheel drive like say an older WRX where the earlier you give gas out of a corner the more it just kind of wants to push and understeer this one I can really tell those differentials back there are sending more power to the outside rear wheel. The engine can actually send 70% of the, of the torque to the rear axle, and once it reaches the rear axle, it can actually send 100% of that to either rear wheel. Yeah. So essentially you can send 70% of the, of the torque all the way just to one of the rear wheels, which typically would be the outside rear wheel um, when you're exiting a corner, just to help that rear end just come around. Yeah. The engine also, it's got a really nice mid-range, but the top end is still there. It's not, it doesn't it doesn't feel like it dies out like around that, 6,000. That was the one part about this car that surprised me when I first picked it up, uh -huh. was that it didn't fall off on the top end. The Focus ST was a little bit more like that, wasn't it? Yeah, it, it fell off once you hit maybe 5,500. But this car, it just keeps pulling through yeah. that until you get to red line. Just for it. Yeah.
<laughs> That's a brutal launch, like what? Yeah. It just dumped the clutch from 5,000 RPMs. It felt like it was sending all the power to just one of the of the rear wheels. I don't remember which one, but I had to, if you saw, I had to really yeah, you had to. Yeah, manage that. Interesting. That is how an all-wheel drive uh, setup should be, ladies and gentlemen. Not power understeer is just no bueno. This car just feels so neutral. I like those crackles and pops on the back. Good brakes as well. Those four piston brembos really do help. Wow, wow, wow. Grip. Grip for Lots days. of grip. Lots of traction as well. It's just, oh man. Jesus Christ. How am I going this fast through this part of the road? This might be the fastest car I've driven on the uphill here. Oh my god. <laughs> See, you always know you're having fun in a car when it makes you laugh. The car had a lot of hype coming in too. Oh yeah. Like a ridiculous amount of hype. I mean, just looking at the car on paper when it first came out, I was like super excited for it. I was like, this this is the hot hatch that America has been waiting for. For those that have driven it, it lives up to the expectations very yeah. well. I would say so far it definitely does. Ah. Yeah, I had to turn the wheel left again. I got a good enough sense of what this car is like on the road. Um, it's probably a different experience on the track, but on the road, a lot of power, a lot of torque, very broad power band. When you start rolling into the gas, you do feel a little bit of torque steer, but then in the corners, you can really feel those diffs in the back working. You can feel that, that outside wheel just getting a little bit extra power to get the car rotated. And uh, even more so, that becomes apparent when you when you do launch control just because you really have to like treat it almost like a rear wheel drive car just because the, the, you have to manage the oversteer. I don't know if that's intentional by Ford or if they're just trying to send more power to one of the sides just to like kind of mess with you almost. <laughs> Make you think like what, what is going on here? Did I buy an all wheel drive car or a, a, a rear wheel drive car? Oh one thing I didn't talk about earlier is the engine sound. It sounds kind of similar to the Focus ST in that you can tell some of the that noise being piped through like the, what is it called like the induction tube or whatever it's called um, but it's not a bad sound I, I mean it doesn't bother me too much it doesn't sound necessarily fake it just sounds kind of amplified this car is actually really really quiet like I said it's really refined except for the ride quality which I mean I guess there's no way around that I, I wish they could have made an even softer mode like a comfort mode that just totally softens up the dampers. Yeah, it would have been nice. Would have just been. for cruising, you know? It would have been a nice a nice option to have. Otherwise, I'm really, really impressed with this car. On the road, I would say this is one of the fastest cars I've ever driven on the uphill. The way it accelerates in a straight line, the way it brakes, and the way it just has endless grip in the corner. You, you just don't feel any understeer when you're driving on the street unless you're purposely just trying to be a total douchebag. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, thanks again, Brian, yeah, for sharing this uh, amazing, amazing hot hatch with me. Definitely my favorite hot hatch, like by yeah. far, that I've driven so far. I guess th that's not a surprise. I mean, just on paper, this car is just bonkers, awesome. Um, but if we do get an opportunity to do to um, drive this on the track, I think the yeah. viewers would really enjoy that. So we'll see. Thanks, guys, again for watching this video. If you liked it, please comment, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you guys next time. Yeah, subscribe, guys. Subscribe. Don't be prudes with it. <laughs>